Welcome to our channel Exam in the BDS. I am Dr. Dinesh. Today we are going to see three short notes from Dental Anatomy and Oral Histology. Since pulp is rich in cells with regenerative capacity, this tissue plays an important role in clinical practice. The tooth may become discolored when the pulp is necrosed, leading to a non-vital tooth. Similarly, the morphology of the pulp and the root canals should be kept in mind while performing restorative and endodontic therapeutic techniques. Let's now first discuss about the functions of pulp. The five functions of pulp are formative, inductive, nutritive, protective and reparative. Both pulp and dentin form from the same tissues called dental papilla. Thus the pulp contains the cells which form the dentin that is odontoblast. Pulp secretes the organic matrix for dentin and also takes part in its calcification. The second function is induction. Through reciprocal induction, pulp helps in the formation of enamel through dentin. After the pulp forms the dentin through odontoblast, the dentin will induce ameloblast to secrete enamel. Thus pulp has an important role in reciprocal induction. Next function is nutrition. The pulp is richly vascular. The odontoblast and the ameloblast get the nutrients through the pulp vascular system through which the dentin and enamel gets calcified. The fourth is the protective function. The pulp is supplied by sensory nerves. These respond to various thermal, chemical and physical stimuli in the form of pain and protect the tooth from further injury. And in certain situations, the pulp may become inflamed and cells like macrophages, monocytes, lymphocytes and neutrophils try to act as defense cells to protect the pulp. The last function is reparative. The pulp has the capacity to repair injury, infection because of dental caries, exposure to heat, cold and mechanical irritation causes injury to the odontoblastic layer. This irritation is dealt by the formation of sclerotic dentin, where the dentinal tubules get filled with calcified materials to protect the pulp. When the injury is greater, death of odontoblast may occur. In such circumstances, the totipotent cells present in the pulp form into new odontoblasts, which then secretes the reparative dentin. This kind of reparative dentin makes the tooth more resistant to dental caries, thermal and mechanical irritation. Now let's see the second short note, that is pulp stones. Pulp stones are also known as denticles and are calcified structures seen in the coronal or radicular pulp. Based on their morphology, they can be classified into true pulp stones and false pulp stones. If these pulp stones resemble the dentinal tubules, they are called true pulp stones and the false pulp stones appear in concentric circles. These false pulp stones form around the blood vessels and around the necrotic tissues. Pulp stones begin to form around the nidus, that is around the focal region. They are initially small in size, gradually increase and sometimes may fill the entire pulp chamber. Pulp stones are mostly asymptomatic and they are incidentally found while taking radiographs. Depending on the relation with dentin, the pulp stones may be grouped as free, attached or embedded. The free pulp stones are present in the pulp surrounded by the pulp tissue. And gradually as the secondary dentin formation continues, these pulp stones get attached to the dentinal wall. This is called attached pulp stone. And when it is fully engulfed by the dentin, it is called as embedded pulp stone. Unless and until a tooth is not giving any trouble, we need not do anything with regard to a pulp stone. Occasionally when the pulp stone impinges the nerve, it creates pain. In endodontic procedures, we need to negotiate the stones in order to access the canals. Large pulp stones present in the pulp chamber can be disintegrated with the help of ultrasonic scalars. We should try to negotiate the canals with the help of smallest size K files like 10 size K file. When the identification of the canal or negotiation of the canal is strictly impossible, we can go for extraction. Now let's see the next short note that is age changes in pulp. As there is continuous deposition of the secondary dentin, the size of the pulp chamber as well as the root canals decreases with age. Complete obliteration of the root canal may happen in old teeth as a result of which the vascular supply is reduced. This reduces the fluid content of the tooth making it more brittle. This is the reason why the tooth of old people fracture more often. As the age advances, the cell organelles and the cell population within the pulp decreases. Fibers of the pulp get arranged in bundles as the age advances. 
fibrosis around the capillaries and the blood vessels also takes place. Atherosclerotic plaque formation is seen in the vessel walls of the pulp tissue. Degeneration of myelinated and non-myelinated axons takes place. This leads to decreased sensitivity in old people. Dystrophic calcifications may be seen in relation to the blood vessels or the collagen bundles. This is a kind of pathological calcification which commonly takes place in the root canals. This topic ends here. Let's see today's bonus fact. Stapes, which is one of the ossicles in the ear, is the smallest bone in the human body. If you like this video, share and subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.